afternoon. I'm pleased to bring to you our next seminar, Heart Healthy Recipes, Lighten Up Your Breakfast, Lunch, and Dinner, presented to you by Jennifer Burns, chef for Fox 13, and Amanda Hindoyan, a registered cardiovascular dietitian for Intermountain Medical Center. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Is everyone having fun here at Intermount Medical Center at the Heart Fair? Let's hear it for our healthy heart. Woo! <laughs> well, I'm glad you came by the cooking demonstration because I'm going to show you a breakfast, a lunch, a snack, and a dinner that you're not going to even feel like you're eating healthy. You're not going to feel deprived. And that, to me, is the key. Amanda, do you agree that if you don't deprive it, if you can just make really healthy foods full of flavor, and then you're gonna be more likely to stay on track. Do you guys agree with that? Yes, okay. All right, we have some trivia for you. Are you ready for trivia? Who likes Jeopardy? Who has a, who has a crush on Alex Trebek? <laughs> I knew it, Sarah, I, I pegged you for that. All right, our first question, if we could, is it true or false? Olive oil is an example of a healthy oil. They're good, Amanda, oh, my wow. goodness. <laughs> I'm impressed. That is true, and tell us why, Amanda. Um, it's true because olive oil contains monounsaturated um, fats which help lower cholesterol and risk of heart disease, actually. What's another good healthy uh, oil? Um, another option would be canola oil. So canola oil is another monounsaturated fat and that actually sometimes is a little bit cheaper, so if that's the way that you want to go, that's perfect. And then it's also good in baked products, so baking with it works well. Okay, good information. And uh, up, up holds a higher heat when you're cooking, right? With exactly. The canola. Yes. Okay, all right, question number two, and boy, this is a long one. I am a tear-shaped nut packed with nutrients like fiber, magnesium, iron, and calcium. In one serving, I have more calcium than any other nut, 23 milligrams. I also provide 15% of the recommended daily allowance of vitamin E. Like all nuts, I provide plant protein, so you don't need to eat so much meat. And I'm good for your heart. What am I? Walnut. Who says walnut? Who says almond? Almond's right. <laughs> winners, winners. Okay. Why, why is that true, Amanda? Um, so almonds are a great source of protein, and they're, you're also getting the magnesium, and it's a good vegetarian source of protein, I think, and without getting lots of um, unwanted fats, you're getting the healthy fats, again, the monounsaturated. That's good information. How many of you practice something like Meatless Monday? Maybe take one day off a week and just do no meat. Anybody? Oh, that's great, that's great. And there's so many options now. I'm gonna show you a great quinoa salad that, uh, you know, yeah, you can put grilled chicken in, but every now and then it's good, you know, get your proteins from beans or nuts, like we're saying. Okay, here we go. Question number three. True. Raise their hand and have a gift. Oh, oh, this one's for a gift. For a gift. Woohoo. <laughs> All right, true or false? You're going to get some almonds. No. <laughs> true or false? The yolk is the healthiest part of the egg. False. That's right. What does she win? Woo! <laughs> How many of you like Wheel of Fortune? No. <laughs> okay, false. Now, why is it false, Amanda? What about the, the yolk being, it's not the healthiest part? Yeah, so the yolk is actually where all the fat is found in the egg. When you're eating the egg whites, you're getting the protein. So that's the part that's going to be a little bit healthy for you, and you're not going to get the cholesterol or the saturated fat that would be found in the yolk. So a lot of times in recipes, you can replace um, two egg whites for... Um, just a regular egg, and then that way you're cutting back on the unwanted fat. Perfect, and we're going to actually show that in a breakfast burrito here in just a second. All right, you ready for another question? Are you on the edge of your seat now? <laughs> Wait till I start cooking. No. <laughs> All right, how many teaspoons of sugar are in one 12 ounce can of soda? A, one teaspoon, B, four teaspoons, C, seven, D, ten. How many say B? How many say D? How many say A? How many say F? 
All right, D is right. 41 grams of sugar. Who is drinking this sugary stuff? Come on. Who's, come on. Yes, I love this crowd. Good crowd, heart healthy. 41 grams of sh sugar and empty calories. And I love that word empty calories because that's, you know, that's something you gotta look at in, in whatever you're eating. If you can get more nutrients from it, you should. Uh, Amanda, tell us a little bit about that. Exactly. Empty calories are just, you're getting a lot of calories that can contribute to weight gain and that can put you at more at risk for heart disease. So anywhere where you're getting um, calories that aren't getting nutrition, like fiber, or vitamins and minerals, you kind of want to stay clear of those foods. And things like soda. At like a diet soda? It's, I mean, they're all made the same way. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a quick little story. When my mom was going to college, she told me this, that they were doing an experiment. <laughs> Hopefully, Coke doesn't sponsor Intermountain Medical. So, no. they, she was doing an experiment, and they went into a lab, and they had a, a, a piece of a raw steak, and they put the base of what every soft drink is made of on that steak. When they came in the next day, there was a hole in the steak. If you want to drink it, you can drink it, but <laughs> it's, you know, I mean, this is always good to look at your healthy options. I mean, there's so many, you know, the sparkling waters with some lemon or lime or, you know, something that maybe you can try to wean off if you, if you are a big fan or just moderation and everything. Yes. Okay. Last question. Any more gifts, sir? Okay. All right. This is a gift. This is a big one. True or false, sea salt is a healthy, low-sodium alternative to table salt. Okay, I saw you first. <laughs> yes, you in the back, in the blue shirt with the glasses. Yes. That's right. Why? <laughs> Still contains the sodium. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not, you think because you hear people say use the sea salt. Okay, she said she has a friend who um, had heart issues and he was told to eat a healthier salt for the sea salt. So a really good alternative, which are so many on the market, and um, Mrs. Dash is not a sponsor of mine, I'm not promoting Mrs. Dash, but any no salt seasoning, because look at all the wonderful flavors they have. Now, have you guys gone down that aisle and seen all the different alternatives, like the lemon garlic or you know lemon pepper. They have so many alternatives. You know, this is a garlic and herb. So, you can really season without putting the salt. And Amanda, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not, but sodium is so hidden in so many of our foods. Yeah, I think a lot of times we'll think, oh, I'll get rid of all the sodium in my diet by not using the salt shaker anymore. But that's not true. It's just found in so many processed foods. So um, a lot of times they use sodium to preserve foods. So a lot of times those are the foods you find. If you think about the grocery store, um, the foods on the middle aisles of the grocery store, a lot of times they're shelf stable for a long time and a lot of times they're being preserved with sodium and that's why they might be higher sodium Thank foods you. like your chips and um, cookies and things like that. Yeah, perfect. Okay, who wants to come help me crack an egg? <laughs> you in the back. Come on up. Yep. Give her a round of applause. You know what you win? You win these gloves. <laughs> You can take them home. Come on up. Now, do you cook a lot? Amanda, do you want to do the microphone? Oh. Do you cook a lot? I do. You do? What's your, what's your specialty? Uh, a little of everything. A little of everything. Cracking eggs? <laughs> sure. OK. Can you, can you separate the egg and the egg white? Thank you. We're going to put you to the test. OK. okay put the gloves on. Should I take off my jacket? It, no, you don't have to do that. Okay, so what we're doing right over here, well, tell us your first name. Bonnie. Bonnie. Bonnie, the, she's really actually doing the demo today. I don't, I don't, we're switching bait, switching bait. No, okay, breakfast burrito with pico de gallo, and here's what we're doing. Bonnie, if you can take the egg, and this is a great, you know, we were just talking about this alternative, or you can also buy the egg whites, you know, in the grocery store. But if you want to crack it and separate the yolk from the egg, yeah, from the whites, I should say. To the left, to the right, it's like a dance. Look at her go. Beautiful. Give her a round of applause. 
All right, if you want to do that last egg for me, that would be perfect. And let's talk about what's in this uh, recipe. Lots of color. The more color you put into your diet when you go through the fruits and vegetables section, the more nutrients you're getting. Every single color represents a different nutrient. So when you're going through, pick up the red bell pepper and the yellow and the orange if you can add it in. Any recipe, I always say I have a published cookbook. My, the front of my book says don't follow my recipes. Make them your own. I think that's where you have more fun cooking. Do you agree with me? I can tell if she should say yes. Make them your own or add in more ingredients that you feel will work in those recipes. A breakfast burrito is so versatile. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank All you right. Good. Okay. There's a trash can right there you. if you don't want to take them home for your souvenir. Um, okay. So right over here we have an egg white and then we have some, you can either use like a, if you're, you know, a lot of people have problems with dairy, you can use like an almond milk. Um, or a soy or something like that, or just a, a skim is what it calls for. So we've got, what that does is it just makes our eggs extra creamy. So we're just gonna take the egg whites with the milk and just beat them up a little bit. Beat them up a little bit. Okay, there we go, lightly beat there. Now right over here, let's talk about some of the colors that we have going on. I'm gonna chop some of this up. Right here, turkey sausage. Turkey sausage, it's already cooked. Again, just looking for those alternatives to make things a little bit lighter. Why do you have to do beef every time? Try to do the turkey or something like that. And I mean, you're gonna feel better. And tell us why we need to do that, Amanda. Yeah, I think it's just little practices like that. Um, putting in white meat like turkey instead of beef. Just those little things add up in the long run. You're gonna cut some saturated fat from your diet and it adds up. Absolutely, anywhere. Just those little shortcuts do add up. Okay, ready for the sizzle? You ready? <laughs> this is, these are the Gallagher seats. No. There we go. I knew that burner was hot. Okay. That is, that's our red bell pepper going in. We've got some broccoli going in, just bro broccoli florets. We've got some mushrooms. And tell us a little bit, Amanda, about uh, like something like broccoli. Why is that considered just such one of the superfoods, like a um, broccoli and spinach being so high in nutrition? Yeah, so broccoli is really high in vitamin A and vitamin C, and both of those um, are antioxidants. So um, it really does have a good effect on, on the body when it is being metabolized. So it's a great way to get, I just love this, because it's a great way to get vegetables into your breakfast. You're getting lots of different colors, so it's pretty, and the color provides all those different vitamins and minerals. So. Okay, let's get some pepper and lots of sea salt. Just kidding, not sea salt. <laughs> Lots of no salt seasoning. It's gonna give lots of flavor there. I was just wondering if you were paying attention. Okay, right over here, I'm gonna give it a stir. I'm gonna make it smell good, I'm not kidding. Okay, just give it, you're just gonna want your, you know, your vegetables just kinda of soften up just for a second there. And then once they do, you're gonna add in the egg whites, we're gonna add in the turkey sausage, and then we're gonna add in some part skim Cheese, so then that's another step. Why deprive yourself if you are a cheese lover? I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit. And you know, part skim is a good way to go. Just again, one little shortcut rather than having the full fat. Amanda, why is that a good idea? Um, no. <laughs> again, you're cutting the calories Amanda, in why fat. is this a good idea? <laughs> No, and with cheese, I think it's really important because a lot of people do like cheese, so you shouldn't deprive yourself. And, but in general, the whiter the color of the cheese, the less fat it's usually going to have. So like a mozzarella would be a little bit lower fat option than like a cheddar cheese. That's a great tip. Now let's talk about this. What, th this, this is obviously flour tortilla. What kind of flour tortilla is this? Whole wheat. Now why is that a better idea than white flour? I'm putting you on the spot right here and now. More grains and nutrients. Amanda, is that correct? Yeah, exactly, that's perfect. And you're getting fiber from it too. The fiber is the big benefit. So you might not see a big calorie difference between like a white tortilla and a brown tor and a whole wheat tortilla, but the fiber content's gonna be different. So you should be, feel more satisfied in the end after eating a whole wheat tortilla. And it has good effects on cholesterol levels, so. Absolutely. By a show of hands, how many of you have tried the whole wheat pastas at this point, anybody? What do you think of them? Shout it out. Kind of a nutty flavor, isn't it? And I, I feel better eating it. I do. I mean, because I love my pasta, but when you have the whole wheat, like, like Amanda was just saying, you're going to get more, um, more of the fiber. And what does fiber do, Amanda? What does that help us feel like? So fiber is going to help with that um, fullness feeling. So ideally, you're going to feel full faster and feel full longer. 
Um, and again, it has that good effect on lowering your bad cholesterol. So I have an idea. I thought of it last night. What if we thought of calories like money? So if, you're, if your doctor says, you know, hey, you, you need to be eating 1,200 calories a day or 1,400 calories, whatever it is for your body. You know, if you look at like spending money, when you wake up in the morning, you get that, let's say it's 1,400 calories. You get $1,400 every single day, and how are you going to spend that? And if, you know, there's so many calorie counters now, like if you have a smartphone, you can put in what you eat. And if you have an electric typewriter, all you need is a pen and paper. No, I'm just kidding. If you don't have a smartphone, just write down sometimes what you eat, and it's amazing. I'm a snacker. I eat little meals all the time. I don't like to sit down and get, have a big meal. It, and it just makes, I don't think it makes any of us feel that good, like when you've just had a thank, big Thanksgiving dinner. So if you're eating small meals, but if you're paying attention, because sometimes I'll, be, I'll snack and snack, and then you don't realize how much you've actually put in, into your body. So it's just paying attention. But what do you guys think about that? I mean, if you look at it like dollars sometimes, and you're starting, and, OK, I'm going to spend 250 here on this meal. I'm going to spend 400 over here. And sometimes you, that's a good way for us to kind of stay in check. Do, what do, you, do we like this idea? OK. <laughs> Everyone's like, what is she talking about? OK, look how delicious this looks. Can you see all the color there? One thing I definitely want to uh, encourage you is when you're cooking your vegetables, don't overcook them because you're cooking out all the nutrients. So you just want to, you know, if you, they have a little bit of that crunch to them still, just a little bit, that's where you're going to, you know, maintain the nutrients as much as you can. Let's get in that delicious already cooked turkey sausage. This is a great one for kids too and a good one if you're on the road and you're just having to run out, put it into one of these tortillas. And that's going to be perfect. While that's finishing up, I'm going to show you a really quick pico de gallo. How many of you have made your own pico de gallo or salsa? So fresh, so refreshing. And if, you, or if you're not a person that doesn't like heat, you could just leave out this little baby right here. What's that? Jalapeno. jalapeno. What's hotter than a jalapeno? What's, what's some of the pe habanero. habanero, yes. Exactly. A serrano is even hotter. How do you take the heat? Uh, Amanda, out of a pepper. Um, so you definitely don't want to use the seeds. The That's seeds, <laughs> yes. And don't touch your eyes or anything. I've made that mistake after. How many of so. you have done that before? <laughs> You've touched the pepper and touched, yeah. My husband and I are big, big heat fans, so we're always chopping up the peppers, and got to be careful with that, I'm telling you. All right, there's our onion right there. This is so simple. I think we've and, got a question right here. OK, go ahead. That's right. You can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. I love it. You know, when you're making your own, it's always, you know, so easy to do store-bought, and I certainly do that, uh, you know, all the time. But it's so easy to make your own because then you can maintain your own, you know, the amount of sodium, salt, and the ingredients that you put into your foods. I, I mean, how many of you are making your own salad dressings at home? One, two people? How many of you are buying ranch and blue cheese? <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK. Oh, very good, Sarah in the back. Thank you for that encouragement <laughs> at Intermount Medical Center. No. Uh, I mean, we, it's all about balance. It's all about moderation. But it's so easy to make your own uh, dressings at home. And I'm going to show you a quick and easy one on the next segment there. That looks all cooked through, looks beautiful. Let's take our pico de gallo and finish this real quickly. I love these Roma tomatoes, and I will tell you <laughs> I will tell you one little secret. If you do cut your tomatoes first and you put a pinch, not, not a lot, just a pinch of salt on your tomatoes, let them just sit and stir them for a good 10 minutes and it brings out um, all the juices in them and the pico de gallo is delicious like that. But just a tiny, tiny pinch is all you need. All right, we'll leave out the jalapeno today, but you can add it if you like. How many of you have a love-hate, well, it's either love or hate, how many of you love cilantro? How many of you do not like cilantro? <laughs> It is, see? It's 50-50. You don't know what it is? OK, so it's, can we get a, can we see that? Yeah. It's just, it's actually, it looks like parsley. Yeah, looks like parsley. And it's just got, it's, it's got a pretty prominent flavor. So it's, you know, people either love it or, or they, they don't like it. OK, let's get that in there. Can I get a towel on me? OK, thank you. All right, let's get some of our no salt seasoning going. And what is the key to good salsa or pico de gallo? What have I left out? Lime. lime. You got it. How do you get the most juice out of your lime? Squeeze it. Squeeze it. <laughs> Woo. 
You roll it. That's one. You want another tip? Pop it in the microwave for 15 seconds. And you'll get the most out of your lime. You, we want to get the most out of our citrus in life, right? <laughs> All right, here we go. There's that lime juice. If you have an hour that, to let this go in the refrigerator and marinate, that's when you're going to get the most flavor out of your pico de gallo. You guys ready for me to plate it? <laughs> Am I making you hungry yet? All right, let's take our burrito here. And portion control and portion size. Let's talk about that, Amanda. Go ahead. Yeah, so either on, um, this is a great breakfast option. Um, the tortilla is going to be where you're going to find a lot of carbohydrates. So uh, I think you could either go with a smaller tortilla for a portion size and just have one like bre breakfast burrito. Yeah. Or you could do a bigger tortilla and maybe even cut it in half and that would be a good portion. So. Okay. You guys know how to roll the burrito here. You don't want to overstuff it, but I want to get a little bit more in there. That looks like a perfect size and what a great little breakfast. Even I love having breakfast for lunch or dinner as well. So roll it this way, tuck it under, tucker, tucker, roll it, roll it. Okay. And then I'm going to show you, cut it in half, plate it. And I like to just put the pico de gallo right on the side, just like that. Now, s since we eat with our eyes first, by a round of applause, how many of you would take a big bite of that right now? <laughs> I like that. Everyone's like, raise my hand, clap. I don't know. Okay, there we go. That's our simple. Is this? Is this really? Be honest. Is this something that you would try with the with the turkey instead of the ground beef or something? All right, excellent. All right, that's number one. So we sh we're going to move on down. Move on down. Okay. How many of you know what quinoa is? Can you spell it? <laughs> Q-U-I-N-O-A. It is a grain, and we can just put this somewhere, um, maybe like on one of the plates or something. Um, it is a grain that uh, is high in protein, higher in protein than um, almost any grain out there, and high in fiber. Amanda, tell us a little bit about quinoa. Yeah, I think quinoa is great for just for that option. It's a little bit different. Um, it's, you know, one of the only grains that has a little bit of protein in it. And it's actually a complete protein, so your body absorbs it really well. Um, and it also happens um, to be gluten-free. So if anyone in your family has celiac disease, or it's a great option for someone like that and to get some protein with okay. that. All right, I'm going to show you a simple, this could be a salad dressing, but this is also a dressing that's just going to go on, um, our, on our quinoa to help flavor it up. Yes, sir. Quinoa? Did you say where is it grown? Oh, where can you buy it? Where is it growing at? <laughs> We're stumped. No. <laughs> it's grown here. I actually don't know where it's from, to be honest. I'm not sure. I just know it's good for you, though. So. <laughs> It's one of those things, though, it's like a couscous. It's like a you know, pasta or something. You have to season it. You can cook it. It's, uh, how you cook it is it's usually you know, a grain. I've cooked this one. But it's, if, it's, if it calls for one cup, then it's two cups of water. But you could use like a low-sodium chicken broth or something like that, and that's going to start to give it a base flavor. So you really have to season it. You really have to flavor it for it to, to taste good, or else it's going to be quite bland. Can I have my chopping knife? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So this one actually, let's talk about what, we have, what we're going to do. We're going to do a, a quick dressing in this one, and then we're going to use some low-sodium uh, white beans that I've rinsed. Why do you want to rinse your canned vegetables, like, like beans? That's right. That's exactly right. Just put them under cold water in a colander, rinse them really well, and that, again, helps you maintain getting rid of some of the sodium. Don't, don't wash them with soap, though. Okay. <laughs> I had somebody call in the show, and they said, she said to wash them. And I said, I, I think I'm going to just refer to it as rinsing from now on. <laughs> These taste soapy. I don't know. OK, we're going to get some lime juice in here. Lots of lime in here. Do any of you, when you're drinking water, uh, are all of you water drinking fans? Yes? Do any of you put citrus in it? You ever put like a squeeze of lemon or lime? Why is that a good idea, Amanda? What, what can citrus uh, give to us? 
It actually helps quench your thirst a little bit. So yeah, just putting a little bit of lemon into your water, um, and that's not going to add, you know, a whole lot of calories or anything. It just makes it taste better a lot for a lot of people too. So and, and some same nutrients too. Yeah, and some nutrients exactly. So and that's why if you ever have like a dry mouth and um, they kind of recommend um, sucking on like sugar-free lemon candies because it's going to help you produce more saliva and it actually helps quench your thirst. Oh, that's so. a great tip. All right. So what we got in there is a little bit of uh, red pepper flakes, some lime juice, a little bit of cumin, which is going to give a little bit of a smoky flavor, and I'm streaming in some extra virgin olive oil. So our dressing is done. I love um, a very uh, an easy balsamic vinaigrette, as I do like a balsamic vinegar. You can put in some, uh, you know, a sweetener of your choice, uh, something like agave, um, some honey, but just a little bit, and some Dijon mustard, and then stream in some extra virgin olive oil. Sometimes I grate in a garlic clove. It's a delicious balsamic vinaigrette that I always have on hand. That's, um, you know, again, so easy to control your sodium there. Okay, let's get some crunch going in this. We've got some celery. And actually, we want to do our no salt seasoning and our pepper. If you season every step of the way, because I've already seasoned our quinoa with no salt seasoning and the pepper, if you season your food every step of the way, I promise you no one's ever going to say that you're a bland cook. If you don't, you may be accused of it. I'm just letting you know. So that's just a way. I mean, if you can just season each step, that's where you're going to get the most flavor. Amanda, what is your favorite dish to cook? Um, my favorite dish? Um you know, off the top of my head, it's hard to pick. <laughs> I love when I put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there's lots of fun things to cook. And I like, I like the idea of making easy salads like this. This is something that's, you know, great that you can, you know, the quinoa was already prepared today, but really it only takes 10 to 15 minutes to prepare, add some vegetables. It's a great vegetarian dish, too. So yep. you're getting fiber and protein. So Instead of just going to a white pasta or something, you know, maybe give it a shot. Okay, who would like to come up and here and help me with a step of this? Anybody? No? Okay. <laughs> People are like, I'm not going up there. Okay. How? What's your name? Annette. Annette? Mm -hmm. Everyone give Annette a round of applause. Welcome, Annette. Do you like to cook? I do. Okay. What's one of your favorite dishes? Oh, you're a baker. Yeah, okay. Like I could learn a lot from you. I'm not, I'm not a good baker. Because I, I, I'm, like I said before, you know, I don't follow recipes. I kind of make them my own. Yeah. When you're baking, you can't do that, can you? No. <laughs> I'm good at following recipes. That's what I do. Perfect. Okay, here's what I'm going to have you help me with. Do you, are, are you familiar, do you do a lot of fresh herbs, like a cilantro? Well, I do or? a little bit with my tortilla soup, but not. Not too much. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick on cutting fresh herbs. Let me okay. get this tomato gum. Okay, take the, this is again just, um, this is our, our cilantro. Okay. Okay, take it and you're going to roll it into a little bit of a ball. So kind of take it, take it all, oh, okay. take the whole amount, and then roll it into a ball. Like here or in my hand? Kind of a, well, maybe I'll show you really quick. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard, to, it's hard to describe. So you're just going to kind of try to pull it together oh, okay. and then like try to put it into a ball oh, that way. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me wipe my knife off here. Okay. okay, once you got it into a ball, hold it in a ball with one hand and then you're going to take this knife and go from the right to, yeah. Like that? Is that how you chop? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> However you chop, yeah, and then just go down and you're going across. Don't get your fingers, oh my goodness. Well. Can we have a release form, please? <laughs> That's okay. perfect, look at her, perfect. You see how much easier that is than when they're all over? Yeah. And if they're all over, then you're kind of losing it wow. and if you keep it together, so. I'm glad I learned A little today. trick. Yes, thank you. Basil, cilantro, parsley, anything like that would okay. be perfect. Okay, I do like basil. thank you so much, <laughs> woo! Good job, all right, there's our cilantro going in. Again, does this salad look colorful like you would, since we eat with our eyes first, you're liking the, the colors there? Okay, let's put our white beans in. Let's take that dressing again with that uh, crushed red pepper, a little cumin, um, the lime juice, and the extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna put just a little bit more oil here because we got a big pot and it's going in. No salt seasoning and the pepper. Take your tongs and pull it through. Look how beautiful that is. And let me tell you something, this gets even better the longer it sits in the refrigerator. So if you can let it set up for an hour or two, 
that's perfect. Or if you're starving, you can just eat it right this minute. So right after you make it. That is our quinoa veggie and bean salad. Okay. I'm ready to dig in. <laughs> okay. So speaking of baking, that's where we're going next here. We're coming. How many of you are bakers? How many of you want to be bakers? <laughs> how many of you like eating baked goods? Okay. Everybody. All right. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to actually do apple zucchini bread, but I'm, I didn't bring in the apple because, again, it said in here optional um, on some of these things. And I just, you, again, you don't have to follow every single step of every recipe, but we are going to do um, the zucchini, which we have right over here that we've just shredded up. Uh, another good one. If we're having baked goods, we might as well try to get some, some veggies in, right? Okay. Let's take some of that delicious, um, let's see, we're doing the um, zucchini, I'm trying to see here. So you can do this one of two ways, you can separate, is, do we have an extra bowl? If not, I'll just put it all in one. No, okay, so we're just gonna put it all in one. But you can do the wet and then the dry and then combine them, but I'm just gonna show you a quick and easy way <laughs> because we don't have another bowl. No. All right, let's take the eggs and then we're going to use actually, these are two large eggs, but could you do four egg whites in this, Amanda? Yeah, I think that would be just fine for this recipe. Okay, there's another little tip on eating later and cutting back and little steps there. Let me take my fork, lightly beat these with the zucchini. Any big zucchini fans here? Especially in summertime when you have it growing out of your ears. <laughs> it's amazing how it grows here. Okay, another step here. Whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour. It does call for a little bit of all-purpose, but we've got a full cup of whole wheat flour. Amanda, again, let's talk a little bit about the flour side. With the yeah, whole wheat. so the whole wheat flour, again, is just gonna have that fiber that we're looking for. So essentially, it's gonna help with that, fil that um, feeling of fullness, and you're gonna feel more satisfied after eating it. Okay, so we have a little sugar in there. We've got some cinnamon going in some ground allspice. You can do ground clo cloves. Um, you can also do nutmeg, again, just being versatile with whatever it is that you like. And then, of course, our baking soda. This calls for two teaspoons, so let's get that in there. Amanda, do you like to bake? You know, I'm not a big baker, <laughs> so. <laughs> Are you a little bit of this, a little bit of that kind of? A little bit of this, a little yeah. bit of that, yes. All right, then we got our walnuts, which are again, delicious and great for us. Mix that all together, and then why is this a good idea? That it's cooking spray, olive oil cooking spray, opposed to using olive oil. Anyone? It takes less, and you can control, I mean, you, even if you're doing it with the egg white, you know, just put a little bit of the spray down. But why olive oil on that one and not like the vegetable oil? Um, yeah, so olive oil is going to have that better, um, the better fats in it, the monounsaturated fats, like we talked about at the questions at the beginning of the cooking demonstrations. So um, that olive oil and um, canola oil are the best ones to go with. Perfect. All right. So we get the idea, super easy on this baking. You're gonna, just gonna put it into a grease dish, 350 degrees for, what is this one called? 55 to 60 minutes. But I don't know about you, I'm, I, my husband and I are up in Ogden Valley, um, but altitude is a big factor in this state, no matter where you're at. And my food, anything that I bake, I, I always, if it says 55, I set my timer for 45 and check it for sure, because it seems to always be done about five to 10 minutes sooner. So then you take this, spread it into your pan, and this is what it looks like right there. Beautiful, huh? <laughs> okay, so our last one, I'm just gonna grab a water. Our last one here is just a, a simple dinner. How many of you are burger fans? Don't lie. <laughs> Everyone loves a good burger. Ha have you tried substituting turkey or chicken opposed to ground beef? Do you like that? Not as much. And you? What? Buffalo. Buffalo. That's, and that's leaner. <coughs> Has anyone tried black bean burgers? A couple of you. Okay. So this is a super easy one, and I can't begin to tell you how tasty. I've done these on the show a couple different ways. 
um, on the Live at 11 show on Fox 13, a couple different ways. And people are, they, they put their head down at me when I'm making them in the studio and they say, black bean burger, I can't believe it. They try it and they can't believe how good it is. So I hope that you try this one, you know, just even, just out of curiosity to try it. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take everything and put it into our food processor. We're gonna take our black beans, and these are what, Amanda? What kind of black beans are they? Um, low sodium black beans. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so. <laughs> so Intermountain Medical Center, um, Heart Institute actually, is uh, we represent them on the show every Thursday, so we're always doing heart healthy recipes on that day. And I always write my recipes and I pass them through Amanda, and, and I'll do, have the one can of something, and she's always like, low sodium though, low sodium. So that's where, that's gonna be good. Okay, so we're gonna put the garlic in here. Let me go ahead and move this on down. And grab that knife again. Are you guys getting some good ideas on what you're gonna be cooking later today? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, what all this is. So we're gonna put the, the, a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna, um, right down there. Olive oil, the garlic, and the beans is what we're gonna put in. It's gonna kind of create a paste. And then I'm gonna need that burner, if we can turn that on high. And then I'm actually gonna need that frying pan that we, we used before. And we're gonna cook these up, and they cook really quickly here. Okay, let's take our garlic. You know how to do, you know how to, how to do garlic? Smash it, pop it. When you have a really bad day, <laughs> a lot of fun you can have in the kitchen, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, garlic's going in. Let's get some of our no salt seasoning that I keep using. And some black pepper, again, seasoning each step of the way. Okay? And it's just gonna, as I said, make a paste. You can add more gar or oil or less, depending on what it is, um, how you know thick you want these, okay? Brush down the walls here. Back on, pulse it, just turn it on. Okay, there we go. Now I need a bowl that we're gonna actually put this in to combine everything. So I will get rid of our something here. Let's see. Yeah, and then we'll just take this. And you know what? Maybe we can put the salad in. <laughs> we're loose. We'll just put it in this bag. Go. Oh, that's empty. Okay. Oh, there's another bowl right here. Perfect. I thought I brought another one. Oh. Sorry. Perfect. Alright. Are you guys feeling heart healthier already? Yes. <laughs> no. Okay. Let's take our bowl, let's take our paste. I really need my spoonula, our black bean paste. Go. Someone like to come up here and cook with me? Come on in the glasses, I see you. <laughs> you in the red, come on up. Perfect. Beautiful. Let's get a little bit of oil in there. What's your name? Julie. Julie. Very good. Welcome up, Julie. Thanks so much. <laughs> Do you like to cook? Yeah. <laughs> You're being made to cook right now, so I don't know. Okay, so what, are, have you ever had a black bean burger? No. Okay, I'm going to have you try these today, and you have to tell people your honest opinion. Is okay. that fair? Okay. We got the black beans in there, and, you're, and then what we're going to do is, um, actually, what is this? This is right. Okay, we need to add in some of the, oh, there they are, breadcrumbs. I'm gonna actually take this, we're just gonna use the egg white. So let's separate that. You wanna take those breadcrumbs in there and just go ahead and put, um, put about half of those in here and we'll see how we're doing with it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, Julie, you wanna put a little bit of this oregano in? There you go. Perfect, and then we'll also get in a little bit of chili powder, so we're gonna get a little bit of flavor there. Okay, take your hands and do us the honors of just, just, 
This is why it's fun to get your kids in the kitchen right here. This is why. They will be less picky eaters if you have them in the kitchens cooking with you. I promise you that. Okay, doing a good job. Just combine it all together. Now, how are you feeling about that consistency? Do you feel like we need a little bit more breadcrumbs or no? Yeah. You need a little bit more? Okay. All right, I'll get a point. Take them. A little bit more breadcrumbs. Okay. Okay, and then let's just make maybe, you can get full four patties, but let's just maybe make two thin patties out of it. <laughs> She's like, why are you making me do this? There you go. Just kind of thin, and then we're going to hear the sizzle. Let's step back when you put that in. Good job. Very good. We love the sizzle. Maybe just one more patty. So it cooks quickly here. Let's just make them. Go. Beautiful. Good job. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Right there. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Super simple. Now, what we're going to do is again keep adding the flavor. So, we're going to do a topping, a low sodium ketchup. We're going to actually take um, uh, this is just jarred red uh, roasted pepper full of flavor. You know, you could also do something like tomato. Again, add more colors, yellow, yellow bell pepper, anything that you can think of, put it on top of your burger. Okay, we're this is a low sodium, and this is actually a no sodium hot sauce because we know a lot of hot sauces are just full of sodium. So make sure you read your labels. Why is it a good idea um, for us to be reading our labels and really on stuff that you wouldn't even think that you need to read labels? Yeah, I think just being aware is the first key there. Um, a lot of times, like we were talking about earlier, we don't know what foods actually contain a lot of sodium. Um, and with the hot sauce, you're right, Jennifer, there's, oh my gosh, so many, all sauces are so high in sodium. So that's why we keep saying, you know, use this low sodium version of this, low sodium version of this. And um, what the low sodium does is it really helps us with, if we have like high blood pressure, um, it's gonna help with us, help decrease that which leads to all the healthy heart tips that, that you're <laughs> learning here at the fair today at Intermountain Medical Center. Okay, now instead of whole wheat, instead of hamburger buns, you know, I, su I always suggest a whole wheat bun, but these are great. Have any of you tried these little thin, looks like a lot of you have. They're delicious, they're full of flavor, um, they're 100 calories, and of course I got the whole wheat version. So we're gonna lay, lay those out. I'm gonna flip my burgers here. And then right over here, what I just made right on this, um, this deal right here, that's just ketchup, um, low sodium ketchup, some uh, Dijon mustard, but just a little bit, and then the no sodium uh, hot sauces in there. Look how beautiful, they browned up. Can you see those burgers? Okay, let's go ahead and take our sauce and get it on, uh, we'll just layer this on our delicious whole wheat breads here. A Little bit over here, a little bit over here. Spread it around to get it on every single bite. And then we're going to take some of those roasted red peppers to give us some nutrients. Whoops. Thank you. To give us some nutrients and some color and some flavor. They have a real sweetness to these roasted red peppers. I love these. You can make them your own very easily rather than buying jarred because, again, that jarred is going to have some of the sodium. You just put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, salt, and pepper. Cut them open. Take the seeds out and everything. Um, and put a little extra virgin olive oil, um, a t no salt seasoning, or a tiny, tiny bit of salt but no salt seasoning would be even better, and roast them at 400 degrees for about 20, 25 minutes, and you have your own roasted red peppers. Okay, here we go. Here's our burgers and our lightened up dinner. Beautiful black bean burgers right here. That look good. Did a beautiful job on, on doing those. Okay, let's turn that off. I guess it's gonna be hot. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna put these on. And I'm going to have you come back up. I promised you that you're going to have you try a little bite. You think she's going to be honest? <laughs> Are you up for the challenge? Yeah. OK. Here we go. I'm going to give you this big bite right here. Do we have a napkin? Okay. That's actually a little bit big right there. I don't want it to fall out on you. There you go, right there. And you gotta try it and tell us what you think. Whoops, sorry, it's kinda falling. <laughs> See that cut? Got some flavor? She said it's good. 
Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. A big round of applause to Amanda. <laughs> thank you so much for coming, and I hope you learned a couple tips on lightening up, and I hope you try some of these recipes when you can. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>